Rebecca, what are you doing tonight? I don't know. Morning. Maybe watch some TV. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking teen movie moments. Wendy, how much have you told him hmm? about his place and all this? A little. <laughs> Maybe not enough. For this list, we'll be looking at those times we were reminded that just because teen movies have a formula doesn't mean they can't take us by surprise. Which does mean, yes, there will be spoilers in this video. Which teen movie moment had you gasping? Tell us about it in the comment section. Number 10. The True Source of Micah's Itchy Situation Easy A Though Olive Pendergast willingly assumed the role of high school seductress, she didn't anticipate that everyone would start to think the worst of her. But when Micah is diagnosed with an STI, even the dim-witted super senior realizes he can use her as a scapegoat. Who have you been screwing? Tell me! Tell me now! Or I will kill you right here! Olive! Olive Pendergast! His lie obviously gets people clutching their pearls. However, the real shock comes when his actual sexual partner is revealed to be the guidance counselor, Mrs. Griffith. You should know that my marriage is not great, okay? We haven't slept together in like, in months, in months, all right? So finally, this great looking guy comes in and he's nice to me, you know? And he's not a minor, this is legal. Obviously, the breach of trust between a student and authority figure is abhorrent, regardless of how old he is. And at first, Mrs. Griffith seems to realize that her actions are destructive. Unfortunately, when Olive offers to take the rap, Mrs. Griffith is quick to let her, and her willingness to pass the blame is truly appalling. But I see no other alternative than to just live with the guilt. My guilt stems from my indiscretion and yours for lying. We made our choices. Now we just have to let it ride. Number 9. Eleanor's True Colors Do Revenge Do Revenge is a movie that leans gleefully into the classic tropes of a 90s teen film, and at its heart are Drea and Eleanor, a dethroned queen bee, and a nerdy new girl teaming up to strike a blow against the people who wronged them. And we're not concerned that Max is going to realize we're manipulating him? Narcissists are too busy thinking about themselves to realize they're being played. As Eleanor infiltrates the popular clique on Drea's behalf, it seems like their plan is working a little too well. But it's only after the two have fallen out that Drea realizes she and Eleanor have a past. Yeah, she came out to me, and I... I... She told everyone that I tried to hold her back and kiss her. She turned me into this predator. Turns out, the whole plot was a setup for Drea, and the former nosy Nora was the true puppet master pulling the strings all along. We have to give it up to this movie for subverting archetypes as well as it uses them. I'm gonna make sure that you are stuck with your pain forever because I know that I'm stuck with mine. It'll be like our very own version of friendship tattoos. Number eight, a killer twist, Scream. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Drew Barrymore was already an established name when she appeared in Scream, so nobody expected to see her become the first victim of the killer known as Ghostface. Right from the jump, scare, Scream had us on edge and off guard. But we still weren't ready when we got a look under the mask. What's the matter, Sydney? You look like you've seen a ghost. Two killers? Sure, it's unusual, but it makes sense. However, we never could have predicted that Sydney's boyfriend, slasher film aficionado Billy, was less a fan of on-screen killers than a student of them. Makes you want some motive. <laughs> hmm. I don't really believe in motive, Sid. I mean, did Norman Bates have a motive? No. Did they ever really decide why Hannibal Lecter liked to eat people? Don't think so. You see, it's a lot scarier when there's no motive, Sid. Not to agree with Billy, but the mind-blowing revelation does up Scream's horror quotient. After all, the only thing scarier than being stalked by a serial killer is learning you regularly made out with one. I know what time it is, Sid. It's after midnight. It's your mom's anniversary. Congratulations. Number 7. Battleshock The Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2 Arl, let us discuss things as we used to, in a civilized manner. Fair words, Carlyle. But a little out of place given the battalion you've assembled against us. With an army of voracious book fans at the core of its fandom, the Twilight movies made a lot of effort to be faithful adaptations. So it shook fans to their core when the finale's climactic meeting of the Cullens and the Volturi swerved suddenly into unexpected territory. Get them. 
The death of Carlisle Cullen at the hands of Aro landed like a physical gut punch, and what had been a tense conversation on the page turned into a chaotic brawl. Twilighters watched in dismay as beloved characters fought for their lives, and losses piled up on both sides. At times, it seemed downright apocalyptic. Luckily, it was all just one of Alice's visions, but it really got hearts racing for a few minutes there. Dear ones, there is no danger here. We will not fight today. Number 6. Cruel Intentions. That's it. That's the entry. Cruel Intentions. Where to begin with a story that seems designed to elicit shock and outrage? Catherine Murtoy's tutoring session with Cecile certainly raised eyebrows, especially in the 90s. Not bad. That was cool. Maybe you should try it on your friend Rana sometime. It's Catherine's relationship with her stepbrother, Sebastian Valmont, that really gets our skin crawling, though. The way these two use people for ego and revenge isn't great, but the fact that they do it as a form of foreplay makes it so much worse. Any luck with your girl? <sighs> Moving along quite well. True. They're not actually related, but everything about this duo is wrong. That said, Sebastian at least is able to grow as a person when he falls for Annette. He shows real signs of redemption, making his sudden death in a car accident that much more gutting. I, I love you, Annette. I love you too. Number 5. The Truth About Miles Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse As thousands of Spider-People unite to keep the multiverse intact, Miles Morales is eager to help. But from the minute he arrives at HQ, Miguel O'Hara makes it clear he is not welcome. He's worried about Spot. I'll worry about Spot. What did I do? Miguel, it's not his fault. Fault? Hold up. You blew another hole in the multiverse! In light of the potential unraveling of space and time, we suppose Miguel's frustration is not unwarranted, but it turns out that his antipathy towards Miles goes deeper. And where better than mid-chase to lay it all out? The spider that gave you your powers wasn't from your dimension! It was never supposed to fight you! Miguel, don't! There's a world out there with no Spider-Man to protect them because it bit you instead! No. You're not supposed to be Spider-Man! Not only does Miles have a habit of causing disruptions, but his very being is a disruption. This revelation adds a heavy weight to Miles' shoulders, while also opening up dizzying new questions. And nothing prepared any of us for the moment he comes face to face with his own variant. That's what we call a dangling conclusion. Please. You have to let me go. Why would I do that? Number 4. The Bus Stops Here Mean Girls How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? Don't get us wrong, Regina George has done some bad stuff. In fact, in Mean Girls, she frequently stuns with just how devious she can be. From her two-faced behavior to the way she manipulates and intimidates everyone around her, Regina is very clearly an antagonistic character. Though we hate to see Katie fall to the dark side to beat her, we want to see Regina taken down a peg as much as anyone. We did not, however, expect karma to come for her in the form of an errant school bus. And that's how Regina George died. No, I'm totally kidding but she did get hurt. Mean Girls had several fantasy sequences that primed us for a fake out, and that's what makes this moment so jaw-droppingly unforgettable. It's the smart writing that makes this movie so fetch. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Number three, seeing red on prom night, Carrie. Carrie White can't seem to catch a break. Her mentally unstable mother makes her home life unbearable, and at school, she is targeted by her peers. But her luck seems to turn when the cute Tommy Ross asks her to prom. Why is this so important to you? I don't know, maybe because um, you like my poem. The night starts out like a dream. Indeed, Carrie is even named prom queen, but it's then that the dream becomes a nightmare. When she is doused by pig's blood on stage, she realizes that the entire evening was part of an elaborate prank. The stunt alone is staggering in its viciousness, but incredibly, the scene continues to escalate. Finally pushed past her limit, Carrie snaps and takes out the whole gym in a supernatural rage. Turns out, torment and telekinesis are a bad mix. They <laughs> Number 2. The Kids Are Not Alright 
kids. With its DIY feel and inexperienced young cast, this movie has a raw quality that is almost too realistic. Where I see it, I outlook on the situation. Ah, <laughs> Mr. Wizard. It's like getting fame, you know what I'm saying? Set in the wide streets and cramped apartments of New York City, Kids offers a frank portrayal of teenagers engaging in risky behaviors like substance use and unprotected sex, as well as showing in no uncertain terms the potential consequences of those actions. Jenny, you've tested positive for the HIV virus. What? The test isn't 100% accurate. You should... I tested positive? I'm sorry. You only had sex with Telly. You would think that such a diagnosis would be enough for one character to contend with, but Jenny goes on to suffer a sexual assault later in the film that plays out right before our eyes. No part of kids is comfortable to watch, but its graphic, unblinking portrayals of these events is something viewers can't easily shake. Jesus Christ, what happened? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The root of Charlie's trauma. The perks of being a wallflower. Charlie's repressed memories reveal he suffered abuse at the hands of his Aunt Helen. You said some things about her in your sleep. I, 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 don't, I don't care. If you want to get better, you have to. Augustus Waters' terminal diagnosis, the fault in our stars. We were so busy worrying for Hazel, it didn't occur to us we could lose Gus. So unfair. Apparently the world is not a wish-granting factory. The Toros are cheaters. Bring it on. Torrance's entire world is rocked by the revelation that her team's legacy is stolen. Y'all been coming up here for years trying to steal our routines. And we just love seeing them on ESPN. What are you talking about? Burr, it's cold in here. I said there must be some Toros in the atmosphere. I know you didn't think a white girl made that shit up. The real rat at Poise. 13 going on 30. Jenna learns that her future self was the magazine's secret saboteur. I know all about your little deal. It's a sweet little deal, actually. Editor-in-chief, if you help him hit a million copies, so you give him tips. Oh my God. Not bad. I just wish I would have thought of it. A night to forget. Never been kissed. The flashback to Josie's prom is so cruel, it physically hurts to watch. Hey, write a poem about this, geek! <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Heather Chandler's Unexpected Demise Heather's, just as mean as she is popular, Veronica's frenemy, Heather Chandler, seems like the obvious villain of the film that shares her name. That was until JD blew into Veronica's life. How the hell did you get in here? Um, Veronica knew you'd have a hangover, so, uh... I whip this up for you. When JD flippantly suggests poisoning the clique leader, Veronica laughs it off. Yet JD's mug is the one that ends up in Heather's hand, sending her to an early exit. At least you got what you wanted, you know? Got what I wanted? It is one thing to want somebody out of your life, it is another thing to serve them a wake up cup full of liquid trainer. Though Heather's presence looms large over the rest of the movie, the plot takes off in a very different direction as high school dynamics take a back seat to JD's increasingly unhinged mayhem. But in a movie built on upending expectations, it's the death of Heather Chandler that will always be its most iconic surprise. I can't believe this is my life. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to send my SAT scores to San Quentin instead of Stanford. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.